Every time I go to a new barber, I get a bad haircut. And while I'm getting a bad haircut, I start acting just like my ex and sit there frozen until it's over and then lie and say that it was good. But I haven't had a haircut in like eight months. So I decided it was time to do something about it. And by do something, I mean doom scroll on YouTube shorts until I started to feel better. But the solution to all my problems was right in front of me. The square barber. I mean, this dude's saving lives. I'm talking straight from like, ah, I, excuse me, ma'am. Would you maybe uh, want to go get dinner sometime straight to? Nah, she's just a friend. So I hopped on 12 Pell's website, super excited, and was instantly slammed right back into reality. The square barber wasn't even available to cut my hair for a month. And it almost cost $300. Scratch that, and it cost $300. So I had some serious soul searching to do. Was I really gonna wait an entire month and then drive 10 hours across the country and then pay $300 just for a haircut? No, that would be dumb. But a couple of days ago, my dad reached out and said he was worried about me and mentioned my hair being greasy as one of the reasons why. So going to the square barber wouldn't just save me from getting a bad haircut, it would also put my family at ease. But it'd still be like a thousand dollars all said and done after the trip up there and back, so definitely not worth it. But then I thought, why else would my dad be worried about me? And I realized it's probably because I'm a YouTuber who hasn't posted more than a couple shorts in the last three months. Well, why is that? I've been working on this huge documentary about mentoring me. But I haven't had an editor since like August. So I haven't even had time to think about making a new video while I've been working on this project. But if I went to the square barber, I could avoid getting a horrible haircut and I could make a video about my experience driving across the country just for a haircut. Both of which would put my parents at ease. I mean, it was kind of perfect. So fast forward a month and my haircut was scheduled for 12.30 p.m. on Tuesday, December 5th. And the plan was for me and my friend Keish to drive from where I live in Charlotte up to New Jersey where my friend Alex stays. And then we could wake up in the morning and drive to New York because I am notorious for being late. But we didn't wind up leaving on Monday until 5 p.m. And it's like a nine hour drive. So we didn't get into Alex's house until like 3 a.m. I was so tired by the time we got there that I tried to do like a little vlog update and the entire thing didn't have audio. Wait, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> but to my and everyone else's surprise, I actually woke up on time, which is incredible because like I said, I have been panicking this whole time that I was going to miss the haircut. I mean, imagine I drive all the way up there and spend money on gas and food for me and Keish just to miss the appointment. That'd be so bad, wouldn't it? But we were good. We had like 20 minutes to spare for traffic and parking, which is like way more time than I would need. We might even be early, says the young man from Oklahoma who's never been to New York City before. So we were like 30 minutes into the drive when I remembered that I was supposed to text my friend Glaze. Glaze is a native New Yorker who is also like a super talented fitness influencer. And this in your mouth. Bro, stand on business, okay. And I had let him know a few weeks ago that I was coming into town, so I wanted to remind him that I was gonna be there. But he texted me that he lives like an hour and a half away from where we were gonna be at. And like geographically, it wasn't that far. So I was like, no problem. I drove, I can just pick you up. But he responded in all caps, brother, you drove? Which was like exactly what I needed while a camera was in my face and I was trying to act all funny and cool. I was, I mean, the internal panic was severe. So I did what I felt was extremely necessary for both the safety and security of the people in my car and in the cars around me by maintaining the speed limit while still remaining vigilant for opportunities to enhance our positioning within the highway. Even after my vigilant, but safe, driving, we still only had like 15 minutes of wiggle room to try to find parking and walk to the studio before my appointment started. So I was a little worried to say the least, but I was literally worried for nothing. I literally drove through New York City like any other city. And we started walking with plenty of time. And I don't know what I was expecting, but when I walked in, it was like an out of body experience. The square barber was dope, the place was insane, and they were casually cutting some of the coolest stuff I'd ever seen. So when it was my turn to sit down, my hour and a half haircut fell 
like 15 minutes. He started with a consultation and he immediately told me that I had a chiseled modeled look about my face, which I would have paid $300 to hear him say alone. But I had to tell him about my giant ears to bring us back down to earth and he immediately knew what he wanted to do with my hair. And he explained it to me in the simplest way possible so I knew exactly what I was getting. Like, I know I paid $300 for this, but the peace of mind of knowing I'm not about to get absolutely butchered is worth it. And not to just ride, but he also said he cut my hair in a way that it could grow out again for months and still look good. When have you ever heard of a barber trying to keep you from getting haircuts? I mean, at this point, he could have just shaved my head and I still would have been like, in a square barber, we trust, baby, whatever he thinks. And to put the cherry on top, he even told me exactly what to do if I go to a new barber to make sure I don't get chopped like this again. But even with all of this in mind, I still wasn't prepared for the final results. Think you the shit, bitch? You not even the fuck. I be going hard. I'm breaking their hearts. Like, bitches be quick, but I'm quicker. Bitches be thick, but I'm thicker. She could be rich, but I'm richer. Damn. When it was all done, I can say without a doubt, it was the best haircut and experience that I had had in my entire life. I literally got everything I wanted. I got a sick new haircut that definitely would put my parents at ease. And I got to talk to the square barber about what to do whenever you're going to a new barber and like how to avoid getting messed up. Everything went perfectly and it felt so good. And at this point, you're probably surprised, right? Like, Hey Light, you've been wearing a hat the whole time. Were you not covering up like a horrible haircut or something? No, genuinely, this is what it looks like. It, he kind of did his thing, like he was cooking, but there's always a but, and I really wish there wasn't this time. Have you noticed anything weird about this video? Like anything kind of off-putting a little bit? Like maybe, did you notice that I didn't show what the square barber had to say about anything? Well, I woke up on Thursday and I was super excited to head home and start working on the video, but I thought it would be a good idea if I just uploaded all of the footage for me to have ready whenever I got back. So I asked Alex, yo, can I borrow your computer? I want to upload my stuff. He's like, absolutely. So I've never used this computer before. I plug up all my stuff and this is what I see. It looks good, right? But there's no audio. So I was like, this is probably just a computer thing. And so then I just crank up the volume and I still didn't hear anything. And so I was like, this is probably just a computer thing. And I went back to one of the older videos that I had on the, the SD card. Settings and tests. And the audio was just fine. Which means I just waited a month, drove 10 hours across the country, and then paid $300 just for a haircut. I was torn between rage and sorrow, like deep <laughs> sadness and just like the most angry you could possibly be. And Keisha and Alex are watching this and they're just like looking at each other. Like, is he gonna like, is he, is he gonna hurt one of us? Luckily I didn't. I just went off into the room where I took this picture where you could see that I'm literally smiling through the pain. And then 11 minutes ago, in fairness, was looking like a million dollars. Like Square Barber did his thing for sure. A very angry million dollars, but still a million dollars. I didn't know what to do. I was a thousand dollars in the hole on this one video about a haircut, when in reality, I could have just went and got a $40 haircut and it probably would have been just fine and made two videos in between. But that was, that is my problem. Everything has to be perfect. Every video, every edit, every song, every cut, every haircut, they all have to be perfect. But it's because of moments like this where I have this incredible opportunity to do something so amazing and then one small tiny detail like using a new mic cord and then not rechecking my audio leads to a thousand dollar video being completely unusable which makes me freak out about everything so every little detail has to be perfect so we can avoid an outcome like this. But while I was beating myself up over this for the last four days, I finally found the courage to ask myself the right question, which is why do moments like this hurt so badly? And it's because I'm afraid to fail. I'm afraid of failure. So I only try to make the best videos where everything is perfect because I'm afraid that if I don't, nobody will watch. And if nobody watches them, then I don't get to do what I love every day, which is make dope videos. But because of that, I've shot down so many of my ideas because they weren't good enough. So now all of my eggs were in this one video's basket. And so whenever it didn't work out, I felt like because of this one video, I was never going to get to make another video ever again. But 
That's the message I've been missing. The daily reminder that we're all human and to be human is to not be perfect. So leaving the barber with a haircut like this or like this really doesn't matter because just like humans, hair grows and it changes. Sometimes for the worse, but sometimes for the better. So from now on, I'm gonna spend more time focusing on making videos that I think are funny or fun and way less time focusing on the billions of people who literally will never watch. Oh, and I'll spend way more time checking courts. Like, like we can't have, like, look, I understand that the message of the video is that like leave room for error and like, you know, it's a, it's a great, it's a great message. But like at the same time, like whoever is responsible for using this.